Well, we've got a problem here. This maple guitar, apparently this side was left too long in the bender and the heating blanket was also up probably too high. And as a result, the sides of the maple got charred here at the waist and up here at the tip. Now, the other side apparently was bent just fine using the right heat setting. But this side, we've got a dark spot here and here. And quite honestly, I didn't think it was that bad until I got the first couple coats of sealer. So, what I'm gonna show you now is how to fix it using transient dye and a miniature or detail spray gun. So, let's get started by showing you first a little bit more detail of what this damage is involved and then the colors I'm gonna mix. As I said previously, most of the heat damage has occurred on the waist and on the tip of the cutaway there. The rest of the guitar body is fine. And when I built this guitar, I wanted some nice contrast between that maple and the dark ebony binding. So I could, in one sense, just stain the maple really dark, but then you wouldn't have that nice contrast. So my goal here is to try to blend those dark areas into the rest of the areas of the guitar that aren't dark. I'm gonna do that using a detail spray gun and some transient dyes. Let's go over and show you the dyes I'm gonna mix. The materials and spray gun that I'm gonna use to fix that burnt side are clear sunburst medium. And this is a product that I use a lot. And all that it is, it's one part clear lacquer mixed to two parts thinner. You can use color tone lacquer, you can use your favorite lacquer, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna also apply it with an inexpensive detail gun. This one here is available from Stuart McDonald and it's about $50. The nice thing about this gun is it has a very small nozzle set or atomizing set installed in it and that allows you to really dial down a small pattern. If you use a different gun, make sure it comes or it's uh, configured with a 0 0.8, 0 0.9, at the largest, maybe a 1.0 millimeter atomizing set so that you can really dial down a small, fine pattern with it. You can use a full-size gun if that's all that you have, but it's really hard to get small, detailed, and focused patterns with this type of gun. If you do use it, as I said with the other gun, get the smallest atomizing set in there that you can. It's usually just better once you compare the price of an atomizing set for a full-size gun to just get something like this gun at 50 bucks and that's gonna be probably less than an atomizing set for another gun. So this is the gun I'm gonna use. The two colors that I'm gonna mix up to match that are color tone medium brown and color tone straw. Medium brown, as the name suggests, is just kind of like a medium brown. I'm gonna use it to kind of give some, a little bit of a dark color to it. And the straw color is a nice golden brown color. And if you look closely at that burning, you'll see that it has kind of a golden caramel color to it. So we added the straw to that medium brown. Now, I don't have rocket science as to how that I mix this. Basically, I just mix up maybe an ounce or two and I put drops of finish in it until I get to a color that looks about right. Just take a stick and stir it in there. You can also use a piece of copier paper or something like that. But the most important thing to remember is always work from light to dark. Never, never try to hit that color all at the same shot or at the first shot with your spray gun. Build up to the color. That allows you to feather it into the existing dark color a little bit better and it will look just a lot better. So we're gonna start light. We'll make this darker if we have to, but I don't think that we'll have to. So let's hop into the spray booth and we'll start blending that dark charred area into the rest of the guitar. Now, I'm gonna do the whole body to blend it in and then I'm also gonna do the neck so that everything matches. 
to prepare to blend that dark area into the rest of the guitar, the first thing I did was to spray a light coat of that thin lacquer over the entire body and the neck. That allows you to see what you're doing and it will make it more visible as to what you have to do and your progress as you start to blend that dark area into the lighter areas. The other thing that I did is that I adjusted my gun down to a very, very fine spray pattern. Let me show you how I did that. I've got the fan for the spray booth now running at a low speed so that you can hear me talk. Normally when I do this, I would have it at a higher speed and I would be wearing my mask. But obviously that makes it hard to talk and spray to do the video at the same time. So I'm running the fan and not wearing a mask. But when you do this, please wear a mask. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to turn the two controls for this gun all the way closed. And that's the fan width control here on the side and the fluid control here at the back. No finish or anything should come out, just air at this point. I will slowly open up the fluid and I'm going to move up here so that you can see it so that I get some color out. I don't want a lot of color out. I want to work from light to dark. I will open up the fan with just a hair so I get a little bit wider fan pattern. That's my settings for the gun right about there. That's perfect. So let's get started. The other control that's on this gun that I forgot to mention is this one here at the bottom. This is an, an internal air supply valve and when it's open the air is allowed to move all the way through the gun. As you start to turn it down it will shut the air off. I suggest you have this all the way open because if you get it closed too much you'll get spatters with the spray pattern as you spray and you definitely don't want that. So let's get started. I'm not really going to worry about getting color on the ebony because the ebony just won't show color if it gets on it. I'm only worried about blending this dark area into the lighter areas. So I'm going to start right here. starting to look good already, but it's still too dark here. What I'm trying to do here is just feather it in. I'm not trying to make it perfect at this point. I just kind of want to feather it into that dark area. So I'll hold the gun back a little bit. And already that's starting to look better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the rest of the guitar so it's evened out. Now what I can do here is because the waist got so much darker by the charring, I can intentionally make this other side 
a little bit darker than the rest of the guitar, so it's duplicated. Just a bit. Now let's get the cutout section. This side needs to be darker. And once again, I'm gonna add just a bit more to this section here. Let's give this a rest and see what we have in just a bit by spraying some clear lacquer. I haven't done the back yet, but everything's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to do the back. Now if you want to, what you could actually do here is kind of a shaded back, which is always kind of a neat effect, which means you just add a little bit more color around the edges than you do to the center. I'll still hit the center a little bit. And of course, don't forget the neck. Good for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. I'm gonna spray it then with a coat of clear lacquer just to then evaluate where we are and if we have to add more color. I've done about as much spraying as I want to to darken everything up and I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. I sprayed one coat of clear lacquer over the entire instrument and I'll now I'll show you the result. That's the side that we had the problem with, where that waste area was too dark. I taped off the top, obviously, so I wouldn't get color there. And then this is the other side that I duplicated that effect on, just to balance things out. On the back, I added just a little bit more color around the perimeter. That's what we call a shaded back. It's not really, really in your face dark. It's just a little bit. And I don't want to go too dark because I want this ebony to really stand out. Also, notice that I did the neck. So, keep in mind one thing. Whatever the finishing problem might be, transtint and color tone 
is usually the answer. I'll see you again.